there is always a good side and a bad side to every and any life challenge. It depends on the direction, the position, and the area or side you are looking at it from. It is your mental perception, interpretation, that releases the inner strength to defeat the challenges of life. Job chapter 14, verses 7 to 9. Job chapter 14, verses 7 to 9. For there is hope for a tree if it is cut down, that it will sprang again, and, it, and that its tender shoot will not cease. Verse 8, though its roots may grow old in the earth, and his thumbs may die in the ground. Verse 9, yet at the scent of water, it will boil again. Based on this, I welcome you all to stepping up. My name is still Sebastian. One area we are still looking at overcoming life challenges, part three. Overcoming life challenges, part three. Just want to appreciate all our viewers all over the world and people that have been making calls, making inquiry, asking various forms and kind of questions. I say that Lord Almighty bless you all greatly in the name of Jesus Christ and people that have been interacting. And the WhatsApp group, uh, I say God Almighty bless you all by the power of the Holy Ghost and in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Don't be tired of listening to the announcement of the March uh, of the April program, April 2024 program, two programs that we are having in the month of April, Tongues of Entrowment that is coming up on the 13th of April, 13th of April, Tongues of Entrowment with the theme involving your mind in your prayer, involving your mind in prayer, involving your mind in prayer. Takeoff time is 8.30 in the morning. 13th of April, and it is free. Second program is Mental Health Workshop. Mental Health Workshop with the theme, my, with the theme, The Mystery of Belief, Part 2. Mystery of Belief, Part 2, date 20th of April, 2024. 20th of April, 2024 time, 8.30 in the morning at Ikeja. Before the end of this telecast, um, my details will be on your screen, and you just copied it out. And we are going to start our discourse from that area. And I say, may the Lord Almighty bless you all greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. Overcoming life challenge. Overcoming life challenge. How do you defeat opposition? That's what we've been talking about. How do we defeat opposition? How do you defeat challenges of life? How do you defeat crisis? How do you overcome? How do you, over, how do, how do you become victorious? over crisis, effortlessly, stresslessly to the glory of God? How do you conquer the challenge of life skillfully? How, how, how? You can't be a chicken-hearted person and think that you are going to be what God has ordained you to be. Christianity are not for the faint-hearted. It's not for the faint-hearted. It is for the bold and the courageous mind. Christianity are for the courageous mind. Christianity are for the courageous mind. Learn to build strength in the midst of failure. Learn to build strength from faith. Learn to build strength from pain. Learn to build strength from pain. Learn to build strength from pain. Learn to develop and cultivate energy. Inner energy from what? From failure. Setbacks should set you forth. Setbacks should set you forth. Setbacks should set you forth. Something inside of you should well up when the things are not working according to the plan and the purpose that you have preordained and defined. Yes, 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 yes. Life challenges are your ability to do what? To overcome obstacles. Your ability to do what? To confront obstacles, to confront difficulty, to confront adversity daily. When you encounter them, you defeat them, you are victorious. Having a victorious mindset, thinking pattern, oversight over issues is one of the greatest character that moves you to the next uh, level. In last episode, we looked at what? The foundational fundamentals. The foundational fundamentals to overcome life challenge. We said you must have a pure and positive mindset towards what challenges. It's towards life challenge itself. Number two, you, your thinking and reason towards the various form of life challenges must be what? Positive. Number three, or you must always try to see the good 
of every word, of every life challenges. Number four, your first response to the appearance of life challenge is what? Positive confession. Positive confession. If you check and take note, you have seen that we have spoken about three, posi uh, three positivities. Three positivities. You can never overcome life crisis, life challenge, life famine, persecution, and trial with negativity. Please understand this. You can never overcome, you can never overcome, overcome life challenge. You can never overcome crisis, difficulties with what? With negativity. You can't. See, I pause to say this. I watch, I've been watching Premiership for a while now. I like football. I played football. I learned a lot from football. I learned a lot from Premiership. I don't want to talk about it, but I just want to bring out something. Because like, like uh, one of the recent matches now, I can't remember the name of the club. Let's see, the club was leading 3-0. And I've looked at that club, and the club doesn't really, 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 they, they, they start well, they score goals, but they don't know how to, how, how to maintain their win. Club was leading 3-0, and uh, within second half, the other club they were defeating came back and scored four goals. Four goals, that's 4-3. Now, the same thing, too, with life. The same thing with life. Those of you that started well in life, it does not mean that you are going to succeed, though. I've seen people that were shuffle-driven to school, but fast forward, now, they are, they, they, were nowhere, they are nowhere to be found. They were nowhere to be found. And another school of thought will tell me that there are still some people that were shuffle-driven to school, and what? And they are doing extremely well. Some people checked to school, now they are riding, they are driving something. Now, what I want to bring out about the premiership, sorry that I've mentioned the name, but it's the truth, is, is no matter the match, I don't, it's beautiful indoctrination. When you interview the coach, the coach will always be positive. You ask the coach about the opponent, they will be positive about the opponent. They will tell you the strength of the opponent. Are you serious? Even if they are going on relegation, the strength of the opponent, they will still mention it. And again, uh, well, you can debate this and contest it, but is the truth that when the premiership team is losing, the, the supporters will still be there supporting, even in the mean, even inside the rain, inside snow. That is the strength and energy of positivity. Energy of positivity. I don't want to mention the names of the coaches. I wonder, the players, they will lose a match. They will still be positive. They will see the good side of it. Some will tell you, yes, oh, today is not our day. You know that some people, they, they, they have the day that uh, they perform well. Today, we are, we are just ill luck. They accept the responsibility. Please hear me. Oh. The coaches accept the responsibility of failure. They accept responsibility. They don't do blame game. They don't shift it. It's not the leadership in Africa. Oh, shit. Anything that happened, they shift it to somebody. Anything that happened, they <laughs> I, you see, it has been in my thought, and I've been sharing it everywhere I go. That it, it is a strong, it's a, you interview any of the players, they will never run down. Any of the players, they will never. I have not seen, please, if you see, show me. Let me to see, because it's amazing, amazing. It's an amazing attitude. It's an amazing life. Power of positive response. Power of, don't speak ill of people. Don't contaminate your tongue. See, people don't know, or Christians don't know, that when you speak ill, when you abuse, when you look down, when you, when you lie against other people, you are contaminating the power of your tongue. You are contaminating the power of your tongue. At the day that you need to speak, you can't use that tongue to produce. Because according to uh, James chapter 3, James chapter 3, he said bitter and sweet water cannot come out of the same source. Bitter and sweet water. Boshe Kappa. It's you making up your mind. I have made up my mind by his grace to produce sweet water, to be positive, to be positive, to be positive, to be positive. Pastor, where were about if the person is bad? Look, you are not employed. The accuser of the brethren is who? Satan. Many Christians don't know that they are working for Satan. Holy Spirit, let's move. They don't know. Because you are always accusing the brethren. At that point in time, you start accusing the brethren. Even the one they did, even the one they did not do. 
You are now become a staff of Satan <laughs> with that salary. <laughs> you, you are the one. Must they hear it from your mouth? Must they, are you now the spokesperson? Are you now the advertising manager to talk about the other person's weakness, the other person's backside, the other person's wrong attitude, the other person's wrong character? <sighs> because you see, what you are doing is a seed. When the day comes, they are going to open your own. Eh? Where you sow a seed, harvest is more. Holy Spirit, let's move. So we looked at it. Positive response. The first positive response when crisis come is not of neg is not of negativity. It's about you being positive, positive, positive. When situation happen, see people have lost their job just receiving the letter, the sack letter. Their mind is going. They can't pay school fees. They can't pay house rent. They can't. They, what, they, they, that is what? Negativity. That is responding in the negative way. If you make, if you get, get your sack letter, what do you do? It's what? It's a life challenge. It's not the end of the world. You are just responding based on what your limitation. Go to the person that owns the universe. Go to the person that is the all-knowing, the all-seeing, the all-foresighted God and take him. Because out of it comes a better thing. Even if you have lost a child, I empathize with you, I sympathize with you, but that's not the end of the world. That's not the end of the world. There's a way God will do what, do all things to work together for your good. Opportunity cannot be lost. Opportunity can be regained. If you are what? If you understand what we are trying to like say and preach. Number five, we said always, always learn to thank God. We've said that and always know and understand that the solution of everything, the solution to that challenge is within and around the challenge and ask God to open your eyes so that you can do what? So that you can see, you can see the solution he has prepared before the challenge stepped at your door. So we're looking at the wisdom of God, divine wisdom of God. We have talked about how the wisdom of God have showed up. God Almighty, Jesus Christ was crucified. Jesus Christ was crucified as a way of helping him to fulfill his de destiny. Uh, 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 Joseph was sailed into slavery as a way of helping him to fulfill his destiny in God. Peter walked on water, glorifying Jesus until he took his eyes off Jesus and he started sinking. Jonah did the same thing. Jonah was at the belly of the whale. Jonah was facing life issues, life crisis, life difficulty till he praised God, worshipped God sacrificially, thanked God at the belly of the whale, thanked God, thanked God. Everything turned around and made a profound statement that people that forsake, the people that looked at what? At vanity, they have forsaken forsaking their own word, mercy. May you not forsake your mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. And we gradually moved into the gainful advantage of, of life challenges. Gainful advantage of life challenges. We looked at the first one that says something very profound and powerful. What did he say? He said, when everything feels like a challenge in your life, everything, everything, everything. How I wish I saw this statement earlier in my life. Everything looks like a challenge. It's not demonic. It's not benomic. It's not demonic. It's not satanic. It's not from the pit of hell. They are bringing out your best at every level of life, at every stage of life, at every strata of life. You must evolve. You must change. The you that is at this level will not be the you that will get to this level, except you don't want to get to this level. That is what this point is making. When everything feels like a challenge in your life, it means that your life is making correct Progressive advancement. The next one is that life challenge reveals that you have stepped out of your comfort zone into what? Into a new tax, into a new environment, into a new what? Into a new understanding. Number three, number three, they are there to stretch out your best quality from within you expressively. Life challenge are there to stretch out to stretch out your best quality. You hear me? The best quality you even did not know you have. The strength and stamina and energy from within you didn't know you have finds expression or is expressed during what? During 
during challenges, during difficulty. A lot of people run away from greatness because it is stretchful and stressful. A lot of people run away from greatness because it is stretchful and stressful. A lot of people run away from greatness. From greatness. Why? Because it is stretchful. Because it is stressful. Those that don't want to stress themselves or stretch themselves will never obtain greatness, will never achieve greatness, will never accomplish anything great. You can't. It's not a cause. Neither is it a demonic oppression. No. They are testing your revolvement. They are testing your resilience. They are testing your inner strength and capacity. Isaiah chapter 54, verses 2 and 3. Isaiah chapter 54, verses 2 and 3. Enlarge the place of your tent and let, this, let, this stretch, let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare, lengthen your cord and strengthen your stake. Verse 3. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendant will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabitable. Point number four, life sends us a challenge to test our courage and willingness to change at such a moment when we least expect it. Life sends us a test. Life sends us a test. Life sends us a life-challenging test of courage and willingness. Whether you will revolve, whether you will emerge, a new Yushukata Balato Skitaba. That's what they say. Makropotos Kapa. Yete, Erikotos Kribena Malatas Kabadaba. Listen, I've been telling people that, that, that Eagle lasts 75 years on Earth. Eagle lasts 75 years on Earth. And Eagle have a period of what I call um, a reimagined period, a fasting period of 150 days. That is when an eagle that, that the beak and the claws are, are blunt, they are not sharpened, for a gesticulation period, let me use that word, for 150 days is when they use to revolve and reimagine themselves. That's why they live 75 years. What do I mean? When the beak is blunt and their claws are what are blunt, they fly to the highest mountain and getting there, they start hitting their beak on a strong rock to break all the old beak one. They will wait for a new beak to grow. When the new beak grows, on their what? On the mouth. They use the new big one that is sharp to remove what? The old claws. Do you know what it is for you? That is being alive and you are circumcised. Do you know the pain? Listen to me. <laughs> you can't become great without going through a pain. No pain, no gain. The gain of every greatness in life is the pain you have gone through. That's why I keep on telling people that, look, suffering builds your inner capacity. Suffering builds your inner strength. The, the eagle removes all the claws with the, with the mouth, the beak, the new sharp beak, and waits for the claws to grow back. Then the last process, the eagle uses the sharp beak to remove all the feathers allowing a new feather to go out. After such exercise, it now becomes a new bird. Hear my English. An old bird, an old eagle, went into a process for 150 days. After 150 days, a new eagle come. That is what Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, 17, and 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 16, 17, and 18. I will, I will need only 16. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says, Don't lose heart, full stop. Though your outward man is perishing, your inward man is renewed day by day, day by day. How do you conquer the outward experiences? You conquer the outward experiences by renewing your inner experience, by renewing your inner experience. So they are testing you. Life 
challenges, is testing your resilience, is testing your courage strength, is testing your willingness to change, to transform, to become a new you. If any man is in Christ, is a new creation, all things have passed away, all things has become new. If any man is in Christ, is a new creation, all things have passed away, all things have become new. You are now a new creation. That old you is, that is dead through the challenge, through the difficulty, through the crisis, through the trial and tribulation, through the persecution you have gone through in the journey of life. That's why I say Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord thy God is with you wherever, wherever you go, wherever you go. Number five, life, life is all about accepting the challenge along the way, choosing to keep moving forward and succeeding in the journey. That is the thing. Life, 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 life itself is all about accepting the challenges, difficulty, crisis, trials and tribulation, persecution. Famine that comes, famine that comes, famine that comes. Have you learned how to handle when you have no food? He said, Apostle Paul said, I have mastered how to suffer in needs, how to suffer in hunger, and how to abound. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 to 12. Philippians chapter 4, verses 10 to 12. Why are we Christian? Every little thing. We start shouting. Every little thing we start shouting. Every little we start shouting. Every little discomfort we start shouting. Every little discomfort we start shouting. Let's learn to be bold. Remember, Christianity is not for the faint-hearted. 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 Greatness is not for the faint-hearted. It's not for the faint-hearted. They will worship They will abuse you. They will maltreat you. They will mistreat you. <laughs> they will lie at you. They will Life is all about accepting the challenge. Accepting the challenge. Look at Exodus 23, 20. Exodus chapter 23, verse 20. Exodus 23, 20. He said, Behold, I sent an angel before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place where I have prepared for you. Where there is a place prepared for you. The angel of God will guide all my viewers, all my listeners all over the globe to that place ordained, prepared with your name on it in the name of Jesus Christ. God Almighty will guide you by the way via his angel. He will keep you by the way via his angel. He will strengthen you. He will encourage you. He will infuse courage into your marrow, into your marrow, dominia supri endaka, e kute kuteska, padubri helika, je impra lehoski, remakata, ikrumakata kutoshiteke prekatekaba, every kotoma lakaba, unkreteskaba, every kamono suto skite kepe de brekabra, every feeble knee receives strength, every feeble hand receives strength, oh makaya, every hanging hand receives strength, kotoke te kabdu kabdu brekade kabdu brekaba, worship the Lord, stray, kanusi, heru tu kabaliandu skitebe. 103 verse 20, Psalm 103 verse 20, he said, bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, he did the voice of his word. The angel of God is intervening in your life here now, in the name of Jesus Christ. The angel of the Lord have stretched and stepped into someone's situation and circumstances. Your case is not hopeless. Your case is not hopeless. Your case is not helpless. Your case is not hopeless. Your case is not helpless. The intervention power of the Lord Almighty is released now in the name of Jesus. The ordained design of God the helper is not external, it's internal. The ordained helper of heaven that has been released and sent to us is not external. It's the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of us. He lives inside of us. He lives inside of us. Point number six now. Point number six. Point number six. Life struggle comes in different forms, shape, and shade. Just focus completely on your victory. Life struggle comes in various shapes. Life struggle comes in various in various definitions, 
just focus completely on your victory. Number seven, life challenge often comes to test and check your resolve for solution against all odds and situation. Life challenges often come to test and check your resolve for solution. Your resolve for solution against all odds, against all odds, against all odds. That brother waiting, believing God for solution. Don't give up, don't give in. Your waiting is not in vain. Your waiting cannot be wasted. Testimony are with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Testimony are with you in the name of Jesus Christ. The reward of overcomers are your portion now in the name of Jesus Christ. The reward of overcomers are your portion now in the name of Jesus Christ. You must cultivate. You must cultivate and develop resilience, inner strength, skill to face the issues and become victorious. Develop, cultivate, develop resilience, inner strength, skill to face, to face it and become what? Victorious. Number nine, number nine. Number nine, what are we looking at? We are looking at what? We are looking at the divine wisdom of what? Life challenges, the wisdom of God, by allowing life challenges to come your way, it will transform you, it will transform you, it will transfigure you completely and reform you from inside to be what God has ordained you to be. Number nine, number nine, some of these challenges will change you and your life completely into a better version of yourself. That's what I'm saying. It will change you completely to a better version of yourself. A better version of yourself that you yourself don't even know that exists inside of you. A better version of yourself that you don't even know. Let me tell you, do you know what God is trying to do? Life challenges are God's sculptural knife or hammer that he uses to chisel out the rough edges of your life, making you to become what? To become a better person in the journey of life. Number 10. Number 10, the outcome of every and any challenge in life is what you want and need it to be in your life. What am I saying? Every outcome of life challenge is self-determined. What am I saying? The outcome of life challenge is you determined. Is you determined. Pastor, what are you saying? Do you want the life challenge to defeat you, it is you that will determine it. Do you want to defeat the life challenge? It is you too that determine it. So everything rises and falls on your decision. Everything rises and falls on your courage. Everything rises and falls on your what? On your determination. Everything rises and falls on what you decide. Your decision is what defines the outcome of every life issue, the outcome of every life crisis, the outcome of every life challenge. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Romans chapter 12, verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil, Overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil. Overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome by evil. Overcome evil with good. Do not be overcome with the situation and circumstances in the country. Overcome the situation and circumstances in the country with the intelligence of God inside of you. I'm going to go and break now. Don't change that dial. I will be back. <clears throat> Heavens International Center. I believe that what you see and hear here will arouse your faith and your life will never remain the same. 
challenge God using what you see here as a part of contact with your miracle. Welcome back to Stepping Up. My name is Steve Sebastian. And one day we are looking at overcoming life challenge part three. We are <laughs> overcoming life challenge part three. I'm sure you are having a wonderful time in the discourse. I'm just excited at the revelation and the impactful understanding of what God is saying. Yes, if you are just tuning in, don't forget about the uh, announcement for the program coming up on the month of April 2024. We have two programs for you, Tongues of Entrollment, coming up on the 13th of April 2024 with the theme involving your mind in prayer, involving your mind in prayer. And uh, the second one is Mental Health Workshop with the theme, uh, <laughs> The Mystery of Belief, Part 2. The Mystery of Belief, Part 2, coming up on the 28th of April, 20th of April, 2024. Both programs are taking place at Ikeja venue, and they are free, they are free. Before the end of this discourse or telecast, uh, uh, my details will be on your screen, my phone number, my email address, and my WhatsApp number. We discuss from those platforms, and the Lord Almighty will bless you greatly in the name of Jesus. As we go into this discourse further, my number, uh, my number will be on the screen. I'll log the studio number. Just pick my number and let us discuss. Send me your test. Send me your question. Send me what you are going through. Let's find our solution. Let's share the intelligence of heaven, because at this season, what we need to do is to understand the, 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 the things to practice that will culminate to the power of overcoming life challenge, life crisis, of the things to practice to defeat the situation and circumstances at which life throws things at you. And I believe God, as we do that together collectively, God Almighty will bless you greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. I just want to encourage us to get any of these materials, the money in you, effect of praise, uh, maximizing your life. There are still some MP3s and, um, and DVDs here, uh, the mind warfare, building the mind, and a lot of them. We can ask any of those materials when you call and let us discuss on those platforms. And as you do, God Almighty will bless you greatly in the name, in the name, in the name of, of Jesus Christ. The last point we, we brought out was uh, point 10, that the outcome, the outcome of every crisis in life, hear me, the outcome of every crisis in life is not in the hand of God alone. It's not in the hand of God. The outcome of every crisis is not in the hand of the devil. The outcome of every crisis in your life, every life issue, every life challenge, every life trial and tribulation, the outcome is you defined, you determined, and you what expressed. When you make up your mind that this is not the outcome I'm expecting, and you engage fully, put and get yourself involved in practice, your expectation becomes a reality. Your expectation becomes a reality. And the point 11, point 11, it is an opportunity for personal growth. What is an opportunity for personal growth? Life challenges, life crisis, life difficulty, life trials are an opportunity for personal growth and self-improvement forcefully. You are forced to become the person God has ordained you to, 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 to be. You are forced, you are forced, you are forced. Let me tell you, how many of all have this happened to? You have, you are going through a, a, a very funny situation or the challenge of life. You pray the way you have never prayed before. You have, you, you have grown. I went through a crisis in my life. I was praying I was praying always 18 hours every day. I was praying. Life issues happen to everybody. Anointing does not immune you from life issues. It does not immune you from life crisis. It does not immune you from life challenges. 
but it gives you intelligence of how to overcome it. And I've been saying that there is still reward, divine reward, godly reward for overcomers of trials. Study the book of Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. Seven, the seven churches there, God told me that those are seven individuals going through, those are seven different individuals going through issues of life. And that is why I rewarded each and every one of them. I rewarded each and every one of them for overcoming their issue, for overcoming their challenge, and overcoming their difficulties. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 8. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Nine. And having been perfected, he became the author of internal salvation to all who, who obeyed him. Having been perfected, having been matured. How did the maturity come? The maturity came through what he suffered. The maturity came through what he went through. The maturity came through what, see, there's some parents out of love, out of love, they will say what I went through, my children cannot go through it. What I went through, my children should not go through it. Well, but the truth and, and, and the beauty of the matter is, it is because of what they went through that they became this intelligent. It is because of what, what they went through, they became this successful. It is because of what they went through. It is because of what they went through. It is because of what they went through. It is because of, somebody will now tell me, say, Pastor, it is because of what I went through that my life is nothing to write home about. No, sir. It is because of what you, it is because you gave up on yourself. It is because you gave up on yourself, one, you gave up on God. That is why, that is why everything you went through did what? Knocked you off. That's why Proverb, that's why Romans chapter, Romans chapter 12 verse 21 says you don't allow, you don't allow evil to overcome you. You don't allow evil to overcome you. Instead of you allowing evil to overcome you, what do you do? You overcome the evil by good thinking, by good habit, by good character, by good attitude, by good perception, by good interpretation, and by good word, by good capacity. Don't allow, don't allow, don't allow, don't allow. The choice is yours. Everything what is within you. Number point 12, point 12 says, point 12 says every new day is a new life challenge on his own, allowed by God. Every new day, as you sleep and wake up, the challenge of a new day has come. And you should embrace that challenge excitefully. Let me tell you the truth, the truth of the matter, and the truth of the discourse is, initially you will not be happy. Initially you will not fight those challenges, those crises, those uh, perilous times, those difficulties, you will not find them interesting. They will spin you around your head. <laughs> your head will be upside down. Your leg will be <laughs> downside up. You don't know what to do, but I'm telling you what to do. You learn to embrace it. You learn to accept it. You learn to rejoice and thank God for it so that your intelligence, so that your eyes of intelligence, your eyes of understanding will be enlightened for you to know what to do, for you to know how to handle it. I believe God will strengthen you. I believe God will uphold you. I believe God will ordain you to become what he has ordained you to be. It is well with you. You will succeed. You will excel. You will shine. God will announce you. God will connect you. God will impart you by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. The transformative power of the Lord Almighty is your portion. This is your day. This is your time. This is your season. This is your day. This is your time. This is your season in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, I quickly want to now close, close our discourse in the next minute that I have. I want to close this, our discourse with giving us something very interesting for us to think about for, this to, for us to ponder about, for us to reason through something very important and simple. Because overcoming life issue, you don't overcome life issue externally from outside. You overcome life issue from inside. Why? Because life issue, life issue is, is, is warfare. Life issue is warfare. And this warfare starts from where? Starts from internal. Starts from inside of you. This life issue starts from inside. 
It's not from outside, it starts from inside. You need to come to the realization <clears throat> that your, the warfare, the warfare, until you have mastered how to win your inner warfare, you cannot subdue the outside warfare. Until you have mastered to win the inner warfare, you cannot what? Defeat the outside warfare. The external warfare, the external warfare are what? Are more difficult if you have not learned mastered how to win the inner warfare. The external warfare are what? Are what difficult? You must learn to win the inner wars, the inner battles, the inner warfare. So you can and must be, you must be the winner of the what? Outer one. Until you win the inner warfare, you can't win the outer warfare. Greatness in life and the journey of life is to win the inner battles, to win the inner warfares, to win the inner problems. And I'm going to walk you through something. How do you discover these inner warfares? How do you discover these inner practice and things to do? We have made a statement that is common and, and powerful, which is the truth. What did we say? We say the spirit, we say this, the spirit controls the physical. We say the spirit controls the physical, which is the truth. The spirit controls the, spirit, the, the physical. The next question I ask, where is the spiritual realm? Where is the spiritual realm? I, I have done this research, asked a lot of people this question, where is the spiritual realm? Some people will point out at the heaven. <laughs> Some will try and get it that the spiritual realm is inside of you. The spiritual realm is inside of you. The spiritual realm is not external. The spiritual realm is not towards heaven. The spiritual realm is inside of you. According to Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21, Luke chapter 17, verse 20 and 21, verse 20 says, Now when he was asked by the Pharisees, when the kingdom of God will come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation. 21, no, will, will they say here? We will they say, see here or see there? For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is inside of you. Please understand this. Now, if the kingdom of God is inside of you, the realm of the spirit is inside of you. The realm of the spirit is inside of you. Because the spirit of the most high God lives inside of you. It doesn't live outside, it lives inside of you. John chapter 16, uh, John chapter 14, 16 to 18. John chapter 14, 16 to 18. Verse 16 of John 14 says, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. 17, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it, because it neither sees him nor know him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. 18, I will not leave you often. Now, if the spirit dwells inside of us, which is a full confirmation that the spirit realm is inside of us. Number three, number three, the spirit realm is invisible. The, the physical realm is what? Visible. That means the invisible realm controls the visible. The invisible realm controls the visible. I'm still continuing. The inward man controls the outward man. The inward man controls the outward man. The, the thoughts, the thoughts inside, or the inner thought, or the thoughts controls your action. Your thinking and your reasoning controls what? Your response and your character. The country, your thinking and your reasoning controls what? Your response and your character. The next one, your visualization controls what? Your step. Your visualization controls your step. Your imagination controls your movement. Your imagination controls your movement. Your meditation controls the outcome. 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 Then your words, your speech, your language controls what? Controls both your body and the environment. What have I achieved? I have tried to bring out the inner things, the inner elements 
that are typified of the spiritual activities that will, that will redefine your physical what? Your physical appearance, your physical happenings, your physical environment. What are the inner activities? The inner activities is having relationship with the Holy Spirit, which lives inside of you. The invisible activities and are, are, are what are your thoughts, your feelings, your thinking, your reasoning, your visualization, your imagination, your meditation, your speech, your language, your statement. These are activities that you must look into, because we are going to discuss it in details. We are going to the part four of the discourse, which is now the womb and the crop of the matter. You can't be careless with all these things. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 to 38. Out of the abundance of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Say, guide your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issue of life. Guide your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the things that set and defines your boundary in life. So for you to be an overcomer of life challenges, you don't overcome life challenges from the external. You overcome life challenges from inside of you, 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 from inside of you. That is why 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, he said, therefore, we do not lose heart, full stop, even though our outward man is perishing, our inner man is renewed day by day. And verse 17 says, for this light affliction is but for a moment, working an internal weight of glory for us. Verse 17, verse 18 says that we do not look at the things that are seen, for the things that are seen are temporal, for the things that are not seen are eternal. Meaning that the things that are seen, which are temporal, subject to change, are your physical, are, are, are your physical appearance, are your visible appearance, your outward man, your actions, your behavior, your response, your character, your steps, your movement, the outcomes, your body and the environment, they are subject to change. And the things that are invisible are internal. What are those that are internal? Your thought, your feeling, your thinking, your reasoning, your visualization, your imagination, your meditations, your speech, your words, your language. Because I want you to think about this. This, because you see, make up your mind to think about this so you can move to the next level of your life. This inner discussion, these inner transactions are the key that guarantee an upward turn of event, external events in your life. These are the things you pay more attention to. These are the things you pay more focus attention at. God said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13. He said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work it out. It is not God that will work it out for you. It is not your uncle. It is not your cousin. It is not your partner that will work it out. It's a personal responsibility. Work out your salvation with fear and tremble. 13, for it is of God that works in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Because in those inner activities, it is both you and the spirit of the most high God, and the spirit of the most high God. That's why I'm telling you, a part of this discourse continue till we finish this series. Those questions in your heart will be answered. Those are my numbers on your screen now. Start taking note of them. Start copying them. 
start asking your questions. Start sending your mail. Start sending your WhatsApp. Start calling your friends. Listen, there is no stupid question anywhere. Stupid question, according to me, are questions that are not asked. That Lord Almighty will grant you intelligence in the name of Jesus Christ. Because we are already entering into the crop of the matter. Into the crop of the matter. Into the, into the heartbeat of the discourse from today. Because you listen to this telecast up till this point. From today, you are an overcomer of life in the name of Jesus Christ. You are an overcomer of issues in the name of Jesus Christ. You are an overcomer of challenges in the name of Jesus Christ. You, from today, you have overcome evil with good. You have overcome evil with intelligence. You have overcome evil with intentionality. By the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ, you cannot be limited. You cannot be granted. You cannot be shaded. You cannot be covered by the power of the Holy Ghost. No veil can stop you. No veil can stand you. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are a barrier breaker. You are a line crosser. You are a barrier breaker. You are a line crosser. You are a barrier breaker. You are a line crosser. In the name of Jesus Christ, unusual strength comes into you. Unusual hunger for the word of God. Unusual appetite for the presence of God. Unusual desire for the intelligence of God becomes your portion by the power of the Holy Ghost. For in Jesus' name we pray. Yes, uh, just to remind us of our announcement before I run off. Don't forget about our announcement, the program coming up in, in the month of April, April 13th and April 20th. April 13th is Tongues of Entrollment with the team involving your mind in prayer. And, um, and April 20th is Mental Health Workshop, Mental Health Workshop with the team, my, uh, the Mystery of Belief, Mystery of Belief Part 2, Mystery of Belief Part 2, and both programs are free. They are at the same venue, Ikeja, on the 13th and on the 20th of April 2024. My number are now on your screen. Make your inquiry if you have not been there before. We send you the detail on how to get in contact with them. Yes, I still announced about people that want to come for mentorship. Mentorship people in Nigeria, people that are outside, people that are registering and they are having secret discussion to the glory of God and to the shame of the devil. I appreciate every one of us that have made this clinic as a reality. I thank the camera crew, thank the engineering department, people at the MCR, VCR, and my producer, and my viewers all over the world. I say, God bless you. Remain blessed and remain blissful. I am Sebastian Wanneri, signing out till I see you next time. Remain blessed and remain blissful. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you.